All at once, and he just needs to take a little bite out at a time. And so I just wanted to show him kind of how it's not intimidating it does to be out there and to talk. So, um, but I really wanted to talk to you about um, how, because I think it goes along with what Sean's thinking about, is that we need to change the medical and the general profession. And we, and I think the the easiest place to start is with the public. I mean, I think you go to you go to Kasha and you say, this is how I want my treatment to be delivered to me. And I think that dentist has to um, start to change, start to think about it. I mean, most professionals and most people in, in any profession are going to say, well, I do what I do and it works. And then they, there's this inertia not to change and not to do something different. And I think that we have to demand as the public, we have to demand change. And so I think that's that's sort of the message that I wanted Sean to convey to the to the world. And I think this this just I, I'm going to give you some ideas about how to do that, how to go to your dentist if you have a dentist or if you're looking for a dentist. I think that it's just it's applicable in both aspects. So I think this is what you know traditionally dentistry has been, and, and to a certain degree medical the medical profession. I mean we've surgerized everything. You have a problem, you have a disease. Let's take, let's take away the disease part, and then we'll supposedly cure you. And it's just, and it doesn't work. I mean, you guys know that. You've been to the dentist enough times where they stick a drill in your mouth, they drill a hole in your head, and then you come back two years later and there's the same problem. So it just, it doesn't, doesn't really work. And I think same with, um, I mean, you've seen that where people have a knee or a shoulder and they get a knee replacement, and they still hurt three years later. And it just doesn't work. And I think we have better ways to do it. Um, I think in dentistry, the less stuff we can take away, I think the better. And I think that's what I sort of adhere to in terms of what I do. I mean, you've, you've all probably gotten crowns or heard about crowns, and you're, you're actually whittling the whole tooth down to a nut. It's like, why do you have to do that? There's, cert, there's, cert, there's plenty of tooth there that's healthy. Why not leave that? You create a puzzle piece and try and, try and fix the tooth that way. I mean, this is what you think of when you go into a dental office. So if we can eliminate this, or if we could at least reduce this, I probably only give the shot to maybe 30% of my patients because I have other tools that are that are going to make it work. I think there's alternatives to this. I'm gonna, I want to show you alternatives so that you have the knowledge to know that there are alternatives that you can demand from from dentists. Um, I think so, and I think this is why they don't go to the dentist. I mean, 50% of the population. I mean, I, this is probably an old statistic, but you know, 50% go to the dentist because the, the other half is scared to go because they get the shot and drill. And I don't think that's right. And it's also dentistry is for the rich in this country. I mean, I think that we're, that the only way, there's only one way of delivering dentistry in this country, and it's for people who have money who can afford to pay for it. And I think that's totally wrong. There needs to be other alternatives. So, um, and I think that, you know, regenerating stuff is, a better way to go about it. It may not be the answer, it may not be the ultimate ideal answer, but I think that we need to look at that. We need to start to figure out, you can have my USB if you want. I mean, I'll give you my USB, you can dump it on your computer so you don't have to take pictures all the time. So. Um, but I think if we start to look at it and say, well, how can, we re how can we regenerate that part of the body that's been diseased? You know, it's, and that's what the cavity is, it's just a diseased part of your body. It's like if you have a hangnail on your pinky, you just don't you don't cut your pinky off. You know, and I think that's what we're doing. You know, a tooth a tooth gets infected, we take it out. I mean, how how barbaric is that? It's silly. You know, it's it's really silly. So, um, and I think you know, for most part, the dental issues are bacterial in media. You know, we have bacteria. We all have bacteria in our mouths. We all probably have a hundred different kinds of bacteria in our mouths. And some are good, some are bad. And um, we just have to realize that we need to we need to reduce the bad bacteria in our mouths. We need to, to create a healthier um, mouth, and we need to, to have the good influence the bad more than anything. So I was just talking earlier about how dentistry is just an amputation model. We're taking away stuff rather than putting it back. So I wanted to, to talk about the tools that we can use to actually put back or to at least help regenerate tissues in a good way. Um, 
So I think, yeah, traditionally, you know, we've just been taking it away. And I think we need to look at goals and say, okay, this, these are things that I want you to go to the dentist and say, I want you to fix my mouth, so to speak, but I want you, and I know it's my disease. And I think for years, dentists and dental professionals have accepted responsibility for patients' diseases. And I think that's wrong. I think we need to change it around and say that's the patient's disease. They need to own it. How can we help them get better? How can we help them get more healthy? And I think that's where, the, where we need to go with all this. So um, these are just some of the tools, and I know that this is not an end-all, be-all list, but I think that these are newer tools that we need to think about rather than the shop and drill. And I think if we look at these and say, okay, so PRF is, is, a, part, is a fraction of blood, so we can actually draw blood out of people, and we can spin it in the centrifuge and use that parts of blood to help heal other tissues. So if we had a, if we had a part that was missing something, or it was missing bone, or we were missing gums, we could use that fraction of blood to help rebuild it and to help regrow it. Um, ozone will, will disinfect it, so it will kill bugs, it will kill bacteria and fungi and viruses, which are the cause of the dental disease in the first place. So now we can reduce the cause of the disease. Um, peptides are a newer tool where so we can actually modulate stuff. We can use them for gaining weight, losing weight, curing diabetes, tanning, or libido. So we can use them for a lot of different things. There's peptides that are anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. So we can use those in the gums to reduce some of that infection. Um, I, think it, I think it sort of it behooves us to look at the whole body of dentistry. So before you've gone into the dentist and they say, oh, you have a toothache. Well, let's look at that one tooth. And let's focus all our energies on that one too, versus looking at the body and saying, well, how's your immune system? How is your body able to heal itself? How is your body able to sit in a chair and actually withstand dental treatment for an hour? You know, I mean, somebody with a compromised immune system doesn't want to sit there for an hour. They want to sit there for 10 minutes and then leave. So it's looking at the whole picture and saying, well, how can we change all that? Exosomes and stem cells are stuff that can regenerate. Exosomes are just parts of stem cells that actually have regenerative properties in them. They can help regenerate tissues. So now we can add that to places like receded gums and bone grafting areas. And then we can help regrow some of that tissue. Um, these are exosomes. And so they just, they go from stem cell to stem cell and communicate, but they have regenerative properties in them. Uh, peptides, I talked about, they're, they're anti-inflammatory. Our whole body has inflammation in it. You know, our guns are just a sign of what it, it, inflammation in our body. We can look at inflammatory markers in our blood and, and see that our guns are inflamed also, just by doing that. Um, this is the blood we talked about, taking that out, spinning it down. Calcium and phosphorus, this is what teeth are made of, this is what bones made of. So if we're adding that back to the, to the area, um, we can, I can give you the USB, you can just download it. Um, so, you know, we can add this back to teeth, but we can actually show on an x-ray where we actually were regrowing tooth structure with this. So I think that's really important. Um, I think with the newer lasers coming out, there's a whole different, there's a bunch of different lasers, there's, there's a laser in there that will help, and it will actually act like a drill. You can actually cut tooth with it. You can rebuild, you can help rebuild stuff. It can take away less of the tooth structure that you're trying to trying to work with. Um, ozone, I couldn't practice without ozone. I teach other dentists how to use ozone, but if you took ozone away from me, I'd just quit dentistry. It's just, there's no way that I could practice without it. Because it's, the bane of dentistry is that, I mean, you've, all, you've probably seen it, you get a cavity, you go and you get a filling, and then two years later, the same tooth has a cavity. It's like, how stupid is that? It's, it's dumb. It's like a dumb business model. You know, we're selling you a tire and then we know it's only going to last six months and then we're going to sell you another tire. It's just dumb. So now with ozone, we can take away the bacteria that caused the cavity in the first place. We can at least reduce it so that you're not getting another cavity in the same spot. So I think that's, that's really cool. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about ozone and tell you why I think it's so great. It's really unstable, so it's O3. So now you're taking O2 and adding an O1 to it. It doesn't make any noise. It doesn't, and it, and it helps. And so, I mean, I'll be applying to ozone to a tooth, and the patient will say, what are you doing? Because they're not hearing anything. They're used to hearing the drill, and they're used to hearing noises go on. So 
I think it, it's really different. It's it's so antimicrobial. Um, okay, I'll go back so you can take a picture of it. But. <laughs> um, no, really. I mean, I, I just give me your computer. You can download it. Um, our go-to disinfectant in dentistry has always been bleach, and I know that's not something that the public wants to hear, but we've always been, bleach has been our most disinfecting uh, solution that we've used in dentistry. Now with ozone, we have something that's 300 times stronger than bleach in disinfecting things. It acts faster than bleach. It doesn't have any side effects. How many, how many side effects and how toxic is bleach? to you putting it in your mouth. If you can imagine swishing with bleach in your mouth, that's not a pleasant thought. So now you can take ozone, which, okay, it tastes funny, but it's still, you know, it tastes like pool water, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna give you toxic um, byproducts to come out of it, you know? So, I mean, I think you can, going back, in this country, you haven't heard about ozone for very, very long. And so I think going back into history and looking at it, it was discovered around the middle 1850s. So it's been around that long. And they were using it in operating rooms to wipe down countertops and, and wipe down operating tables in the 1850s. So they knew it was antimicrobial. In, the, in 1932 was the first time they used it in dentistry. Back in World War I, they were using it to disinfect when they had to amputate limbs. They were using it around 1900. Nicholas Tesla was you know, the guy who invented the cars. Um, he was building um, ozone machines back in the 1890s, 1900s. He was making ozonated olive oil and selling it in the Sears catalog during that time. So it goes, their history goes back a long way. So in this country, um, in 1934 in the U.S., um, the AMA decreed that anything that wasn't taught in medical school was illegal. So that means ozone, I mean, all the alternative treatments were basically banned. And so not until 1994, the Atkins, you all remember the Atkins, Dr. Atkins, the Atkins diet. So he was a, a, an MD in New York, and he was using ozone on his patients. And the story goes that one of his patients went to the ER, and that ER doc reported him to the board, and they took his license for using ozone, because ozone was banned at the time. They were, the government was actually coming in and, and confiscating ozone machines before this time. And so everybody was like a little scared to use it, and they were all doing it undercover. But he went to court and he got his uh, license back. I mean, he had to spend millions of dollars, but he eventually got his license back. And that Superior Court decision said that if we thought as a practitioner that that treatment was beneficial, then, and the patient consented to it, then it was legal. And so that brought all the alternative treatments back into vogue. And now, in this country at least, we could start to use these alternative treatments, and it wasn't illegal, so to speak, so nobody was going to confiscate it. Um, you can see in history they were using it for a lot of different things, to cure things. I had one patient come in, so I treat a lot of kids, and I think with ozone with kids is huge because it's, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't make noise, it stops the decay process. So if we can stop the decays in pediatric teeth until they get to their permanent teeth, we've won. You know, that's a, that's a win. So I had a two-year-old come in, and she, he came in with his mom and his grandma, and so the grandma started talking to me and said, oh, my dad was doing ozone research. He did a little bit of research in the, um, back in the 70s. And so then I went to my computer and I looked him up. And it turns out he was the first person in the world to seroconvert HIV positive to negative with ozone. I'm like, that's just a little bit of research. It's, it's a lot. So, um, but you can start to see that ozone, I wanted to give you a sense of what ozone can do. And in medicine, we can pretty much use it for everything. I mean, you can name a disease and we can treat it with ozone. And um, this is just a partial list. But what I think is really cool is neurodegenerative diseases. And I think those are, I mean, along with cancer, those are pretty cruel diseases. You know, they're pretty torturous for patients. And I think when, and when you can start to, and you may not need to cure the disease, but at least you can stop its progression. And when you can do that with a wicked disease like those, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. And I think that with something like IV treatments for neurodegenerative diseases or cancer, even the cancer, even if you just stop it from metastasizing, you won. You know, because you don't need to reduce the tumor size unless it's really visible, but you don't need to reduce it. You just need to stop it from getting from growing. So I think that's cool. And I think, you know, with conditions like I've given ozonated oil capsules to people with psoriasis and eczema and they've gone away. You know, so it shows how systemic ozone, even just the ozonated oil, 
which is probably half as strong as the gas. And so I think that's, you start to see how valuable ozone is. So you can pour it, you could take an ozonated capsule to the, to the hinterlands, you could take it to the Amazon jungle and start to help people get better. And, and, it's, and so it's that valuable. So I think, and I think this is really important. There's nothing on this slide, but I think this is really, really important. Is that you have a lot of people in this world, and a lot of people buy into traditional dentistry and medicine. And that's fine. You know, my mom was like that. Well, I just want to listen to what my doctor tells me. Well, and you, you all know that you've, you've heard of people going through chemo, and you, and you know people. Chemo destroys you. That's a death sentence. That person's going to die at, at, at that point once they do chemo. And so, yes, it's really sad for us to look on a friend or a family member who's going to undergo chemo, who's going to insist on going through chemo. Well, if you can precondition with ozone, you can build their immune system up, and maybe, maybe you can lengthen their life a little bit. Maybe they'll be strong enough to withstand this chemo therapy. So I think that's where preconditioning comes in, really important. I think that's what the importance of this slide was. Um, I think from a dental point of view, you know, we were supposed to look at the mouth. And so, like I said earlier, we're looking at that one tooth, or we're looking at that, those gums that are infected. But you have to look at it because gum infections are a whole body systemic issue. It's inflammation of the whole body. It's affecting them. The head is connected to the body. And they both are uh, one in one. And so when you look at and you're treating the mouth, insist that that's why when you go into a dental office, they should be looking at your whole body. They should say, what's your systemic health? You know, and to go in, a lot of people come in and say, well, you're just a dentist, you're not a real doc, so you don't need to know anything. And so, but now you can start to see how important it is that as dentists, we, we need to know what's going on. I need to know what your immune system's like. I need to know what your gut's like. I need to know all these things, what your inflammation is, in order to be able to treat you effectively. Because I can't, I can't start treating you if, you're, if your body's unhealthy. It's never going to get healthy in your mouth. So I think that you know, all these things, we're just removing, removing stuff. And I think this, it goes back to this, is that the thing that kills me is that we've known this for so long. 1890, Willoughby's Miller, and 1911, um, William Hunter wrote treaties. They wrote papers saying that they postulated that systemic disease was caused from oral bugs. So how long? That was you know, 150 years ago. So we've known that. It's not just new. It's not new information. So biofilm, this just shows me. Biofilm is that, what we call plaque. It's the bacterial poop that's in the mouth. So like when you get that hard stuff, that's just fossilized bacterial poop. And it's because it's been in there long enough. So it just shows me how smart bacteria are. Because that plaque is made up of like five or six different layers. There's bacteria that like the fifth layer, that like the second layer. The ones on the second layer eat the poop on the fifth layer. And then they communicate back and forth. They have telephone lines between all these layers. And then they put a bar skirt over the whole thing, bless you. And so they, so antibiotics can't get at these, at these bacteria. So they're really, really smart in how they set things up. And so when you start to look at it and say, okay, well, and you've seen the research. I mean, you see every once in a while in the news, there's a little bit like, oh, periodontal disease related to whatever. I mean, we can relate to just about any disease because it's just inflammation. The disease is just inflammation. So it's just affecting the whole body. And so I think that's what you have to look at. You look, have to look at the body. Like, what's going on in the body versus what's going on in the mouth? So um, I think that... If your dentist doesn't have one of these, and I know this is really woo-woo, um, but <laughs> I would just, I would recommend saying, go to Google, and I did that. I, I went to Google, and I just pulled out two images. So go to Google and figure out, make a copy of these. This is really easy. Let's just figure out how to point at this. So this, this tooth chart on the left goes over every tooth, what it's related to. There's even uh, related to emotions. So you can look at that whole, now you can look at that whole person and you can say, okay, well these front teeth are related to your genitals. These, these molars are related to breast and gut. I had one patient come in and he had two root canals on these upper molars. And he went to like four or five dentists. And, they, and the root canals had been done, redone three times. So he'd been to three different dentists, redoing the root, same root canals. This was 15 years ago. And they, they hurt him. They never stopped hurting him. They always bothered him. 
And he went, he had gone to four dentists in the meanwhile and said, no, no, everything's fine. They look fine on the x-ray. And I said, um, do you have, and those, those relate to the gut. I said, do you have any gut issues? Do you, do you take any medications? It's like, no, no, look at me, I'm buffed, I'm healthy. I work out every day. And I said, do you take anything? He goes, well, I take Prilosec every night. I'm like, okay, well, those teeth have to come out. So he called back a couple months later, and he was down to like 20% of what he was taking before on the Prilosec. So it, it did help. And, um, but so it's just looking at that. On the tongue, it's really easy. The, the tip of the tongue is the heart. The sides are the liver and kidney. Down the middle, if there's a fissure, if there's not a groove, that's gut. So it's just, it's really easy. I'm not, I'm not an expert at it, but that's easy to look at and say, okay, these might be, you know, affecting your mouth health. And I think that's, that's one of the ways to do it. Um, look at blood values. You, I guarantee you that nobody in here has gone into the dentist and the dentist has said, can I see your blood values? And I think if you look at these values and say, these are the blood values that I want to ask my physician to look at next time I go. At least look at CRPs. At least ask them to look at CRPs. We see so many more people in the dental office so much more often than we do in, the, in medical offices that why can't we, we be looking at A1Cs? We probably see probably 60% of the dental population is pre-diabetic anyway. So why can't we look at that and say, hey, there's something that we might head off at the pass. These other ones are inflammatory markers. These interleukins are inflammatory markers. Why can't we look at them and say, how inflamed is this person? How can we get them more healthy by looking at, by lowering their blood values? So this is just research showing that systemic diseases are related to oral bugs. Um, and not just the morbidity, but the mortality rate on diabetics is seven and a half times greater with ones with periodontal disease, with gum disease. That's huge. So a patient with diabetes who comes into my office versus a person that doesn't have diabetes, that person is seven and a half times more likely to die soon with diabetes and heart and uh, periodontal disease. That's huge. How do you treat uh, uh, diabetic testing? How can you do that in the office? Well, you can easily do finger stick. Oh, and I know, I know that's pretty. That's a little bit, but you can easily just get them next time they do their their CDC blood test. Is look for A1Cs. Oh, okay. What's your A1C? Do you have your 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 last blood test? Can I see your A1Cs? You know, and when you ask them, they usually know. Exactly. Right, yeah, exactly. But and and if it's not on that blood test, then ask them next time you do your blood test. Can you look at CRPs and A1Cs? That's easy to look at. You can also do it in the office with an A1C now meter. Yeah, there there is a there is a, a meter too. Abbott Abbott makes a freestyle meter that just has a patch here and then you put the meter on and you can read it. So it's really it's not hard to do. And I think we sh as dental professionals we should be demanding that every patient do that. Every single patient come in with blood values. So like that. I think that's gonna make a huge difference. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Would that fit into your practice model? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, this is just about oral biofilm. I, in general school, we were, I think we were taught that there was like what? I don't know, 50, 100 bugs, different bugs, but there's so many different bugs. And what, they're what they, uh, they were trying to do for years was to create a vaccine against certain bugs. It's like you can see if there's 19,000 bugs, how are you going to create a vaccine for that? That's silly. Mm -hmm. so, so this is, you know, as when in dental school we were taught to scrape really hard, you know, take the cure out and just scrape harder. And um, you can see that, you know, scraping everything, but adding something like disinfectant, like an ozone or a laser, where you're, where you're reducing all the, the rest of the stuff that's in there, it's going to, the tissues are going to regrow a lot faster. So, and pH, do you guys check for pH in your, in your office? I think that's a really easy one. So, gum disease starts at 6.2, and cavities start at 5.5. So it's really easy to stick a piece of litmus paper in your patient's mouth and figure out, it's not definitive, but if they took pH paper home and write, I said, well, God, they took their pH for three or four days and then they averaged it, they would have a sense of where they're at. So we know the more acidic the mouth is, the more bacteria is gonna be there. 
that it's going to help and it's going to proliferate the bacteria. So if we, if we raise the pH and make it more alkaline, we're going to have less bacteria, we're going to have less dental problems. So I think that's huge. And that's something that the patients can do. I'm all about giving my patients homework to do, dental homework. So the more stuff, if they come in and say, I just, I brush and I floss, not as much as I should, but it's like, okay, <laughs> you're, you're, you need more homework. So, for sure. And, and so, and I think that you have to be on the same page as your dental professionals. You know, it's like I know that most patients really love their hygienists and stuff, but does their dentist have the philosophy that agrees with them? I mean, do they have some more philosophies? And I know that the public is not trained from a technical point of view to know exactly what to ask for, but is that dentist conservative or aggressive? Or do they recommend doing full mouth veneers? Do, you, do they say that, you know, you have a little cavity and you're going to need to do a crown? Or are they, are they able to just do a little filling? Are they able to treat, you know, things conservatively? It just depends on what, what your values are and, and, and sort of adjusting and, and getting those values more in line with. Um, this is, you know, this is a woo-woo conference and so I kind of, you know, I looked up the definition of holistic and integrative and, you know, patients will call and say, well, are you a biological dentist? It's like, I say, well, what do you want? You know, it's like, well, I want my silver filling changed. It's like, okay, I'm a biological dentist. So, but, um, I think, I think everything that we, that I just talked about, you have to look at and say, okay, it's an integrative model and it's an integrative picture. And so, and I think that's where that patient needs to be educated. Like, I'm not just here to take out your stupid filling. I'm, I'm here to look at your whole system and say, how can we get you more healthy in your whole body, you know, by treating your mouth and by looking at other things that may be referring you to a medical professional who would treat your body. So, um, I think ozone's just like the Swiss Army knife of dentistry. You, know, you can use it on everything, and it's just so cool. So, um, and this is what I talked about earlier, just create, you're not trying to eliminate the bottom. You're not trying to scrape all the poop away you're trying to create a healthier situation so the poop will be healthier. So, um, I think these are the few a few products that you could get home. It's like everybody has baking soda and hydrogen peroxide at home. I mean, that's you know you can buy a dollar fifty box of baking soda. What do you have for sinus like um, sinus infections? Ozone. No, I mean like I use at home. Oh. Um, uh, yeah. There you go. You're getting a few ideas. Oh, what is it? Yeah. Okay. It's like yeah. six bucks. So, yeah. it's like I'm already doing an Argent in 23. Good. But and then Spry makes a, Spry makes a grapeseed uh, fruit extract with, um, yeah, with water. So that's good. What else, Shirley? We have samples of the Spry and we're at the booth. And then, um, I don't know, the, the, if it's a if it's a continuous yeah. biofilm infection in your sinuses, you're going to need something more. You're going to need to gas it somehow. Um, there are breathing techniques that can help to open the sinuses if that's an issue. Um, obligate nasal breathing and keeping your mouth closed will also help keep the sinuses clear. So, do you have do you have access to those? No. Okay. Unless my dentist does it. Where are you? I'm here. So wait. The there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it for Yeah. And you can flush. But he didn't suggest it when I was in there. Usually, that are that you can flush with the ozone water that we we sell that by the gallon. You can use it for drinking. So it's good for five days. Okay. So you can sit down in a chair and do your ears. You could do the ozone gas into your ears, and that would get through your whole whole head system. And you um, point you it here. You might have to use whatever liquid and then hang upside down for it to get there. It's all up here. Okay, and you could, on the left side. I have cavitations. You could also do it up your nose. You could take the gas, hold the, hold your breath in your chest. Take a deep breath and hold your hold breath and then just breathe into your nose and that will get it. You can also inject right here with it. And that will get it. You mean like with a needle? Yeah, with a needle. No. <laughs> <laughs> does, do you guys, does Tom do injections? With yes. The, okay. Yes, sir. Would he be, would he be at first injecting right there? Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> he goes for it. 
Yeah. Okay, so if you, if you get a shut eye with that, because this is, there's a nerve pathway that goes across, and if the eye shuts on that side, just take some procaine and hit the ganglia over here, the otic, and then do the submentibular, and the eye will open right up. So don't worry about it, that's not a, it's not free thing. <laughs> don't worry about it. We'll go over two years. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We'll be talking about that on Monday morning. All right. <laughs> Well, there's your answer, so, yeah. Um, versus, well, you guys all know this, versus antibiotics, it's, it's not going to, you know, antibiotics have, the bacteria has a chance to mutate and to create a difference, so ozone's, ozone just kills them right away when they don't have time to make babies or to mutate, so. Um, I think we talked, that, traditionally we've talked about trays and putting ozone gas into people who have a high caries rate, and so I think that's a little bit cumbersome sometimes in the office to sit them down and waste chair time and stuff. So I think making them like an Invisalign tray with ozone oil that they can do at home, I think that makes a lot more sense. It drives the oil, or a Perio Protect tray, if they have that, they can drive the oil up into the, um, so just basically making a plastic tray that's really intimate to the teeth that will drive the oil up. Um, we missed you, I stopped and waited for you to get back. <laughs> um, this is about exosomes. I'm really excited about exosomes because I think it's a new tool for me and I think it's really exciting. Nobody really uses exosomes in dentistry or stem cells because stem cells are so expensive and there's so much. They come in a soup of, of like five mils and how are you going to put five mils into a mouth? So with exosomes, they come freeze-dried, and you can hydrate it with saline, and you can use just what you what you need in the mouth, and you can help regenerate. I think it's really exciting if we could regenerate receded gums. I think that would be really cool. So I think there's other applications. I think in nerves that are infected, that are just acutely infected, like, oh, it started hurting last Saturday. I think we can save nerves and not have to do root canals. I think in areas where we need to bone graft and, and augment bone, we could, we could grow up on there. I think people with um, dry mouth and have Sjogren's or, or salivary dysfunction, I think maybe we could inject it into the salivary ducts and, and help treat What? Dry mouth cancer treatments? Maybe. Yes. Why not? We could try it. Where, where are they sourced from? The Umbilical cord. They're do mostly Puerto Rico uh, donated uh, cords, and then they're isolated and sterilized. Mm -hmm. And then the lab tests. It's required that you have to at least go through 12 required tests, you know, for like HIV and for viruses and bacteria and stuff. Um, but a lot of labs will do more, so the more testing. And that, I think that's a good question to ask. If somebody was going to use STEM technology on me, I would want to know what tests they did. And I think that's a perfectly valid question to ask a practitioner. He should be able to tell you that. Because I, I could give you a brochure right now that would show you what tests that my exosomes have gone through. This was one of the studies I pulled up. This is really cool because when I found this, I was like, I'm all in on exosomes. Because they, they took a nerve that was infected and they were going to need a root canal. They shot exosomes into it and they reversed it. The patient didn't need a root canal. It was NIH sponsored, which is like, okay, cool, I believe that. Because the government sponsors it, so I should believe it. So. <laughs> okay, especially if it's that kind of controversial. Yeah, totally. So... A peptides are, uh, they're, they're newer, they're probably 20 years in terms of the technology of it, the knowledge base. They're, they're, it's exciting because there's probably five or six new ones developed every day. They're taking peptides and taking fragments off and being able to do different things with them and be able to treat people just with peptides and do and heal them. So I think it's an exciting science. And I think once we start using it in dentistry, I think it's going to show up and they're gonna, it's going to be exciting. I mean, you can look and see. There's one that induces sleep. There's one that that helps you tan better. Um, there's, I think these um, these ones that are uh, BPC157 and TB4 are immune boosting, and they're anti-inflammatory and they're antimicrobial. So why not put them into the gums? It's an inflamed tissue, you know. So you can do that. Um, Cerebrolysin is, is is regenerative, so we can inject that. So it's cheaper. So exosomes are expensive. STEM technology is expensive. And so it's really hard to tell a patient, well, I'm going to charge you $1,000 for something that I think might work. Maybe, maybe not. 
But if we start to look at peptides, which you know maybe cost us fifty dollars cost wise, can we do the same thing? Or can we do a similar thing with that? You know, I think that's going to help. So, and I just talked about these. These come in paste, so you can actually like MI paste, or you can give patients a paste with it and start to regenerate tissues. So I think that's really important. Um, different ways to treat with ozone from a systemic point of view. Traditionally, it's been take some blood out, put it in a bag, mix it with some ozone, and then let it drip back in. And that's major autohemotherapy. So they have another technique that's recent where they do that multiple times in a two-hour two-hour time frame, where they can do that nine or ten times. Now they can start to cure diseases. They say that after seven times they can cure diabetes or celiacs. And so, I mean, I think that's huge. Why not? Wow. You know, you can take somebody that's got Alzheimer's. Type 1? Diabetes? Yeah. Type 1? Yeah. Well, no, 2. 2. Yeah. And with, uh, with multiple passes of ideosome. And um, I know that, you know, as dentists, we're kind of a little freaked out about sticking a needle in somebody's arm. But I think we have a license to inject, so why shouldn't we be able to look up? You know, Mrs. Jones, you have a cavity on your molar, so while we're doing that, we're going to just set an IV up and we're going to put ozone into your blood. Why not? That's boosting the immune system, that's making it more healthy, why can't we do that? I think it's perfectly applicable. Um, and so a lot of these, so RHP is, is basically dialysis, so you're pulling the blood out and you're cleaning it and then putting ozone into it. I think that's really effective. You can pull a lot of heavy metals out of blood with that. So I think that's huge. Um, ozone and saline, we don't do a lot of that here, but over in other countries, Russia and Cuba, down South America, they do that a lot. Um, and direct gas injection. So if you had a knee or a shoulder or anything that hurt, a muscle, your neck muscle hurt, I can inject ozone gas into it and it loosens it up, it frees it. TM joint um, pain, I can take that away like that with ozone injection. Do you have a TM joint? Oh, yeah. You want me to inject you later? They have an ozone machine out there on ice ranges. Yeah, it works. Yeah, find me and I'll, and I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's on your spot. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't have a Tennessee license, so nobody's going to take it away. So. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, so, you all do this in your office, right? Ms. Jones, we're going to do a cavity. Hold your mouth open while I do this stretch insulation for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, rectally and vaginally, they're real porous tissues. So, ozone gas will get into the bloodstream really quickly. And I think it's a great alternative to do an IV because it's non invasive. You know, you're not sticking a needle in somebody's vein. And I think it's stuff that people can do at home. They can buy a cheap ozone generator and they can do that treatment at home. And it's almost as effective. You know, I talk, for me, I'm pretty healthy, and ozone gives me energy at the end of the day. Like, at the end of the day, after I've done a lot of patients, and I'm totally exhausted, and I just want to go home and sleep, and I have energy. If I do ozone, I can go home, I can cook dinner, I can take out the garbage, I can reshingle the rub. So, it's really cool stuff. So, rectally, I probably have energy for two or three days. Um, with a, just a regular drip, where you're pulling out a bag of ozone, I probably have energy for about a week. And with the multi-pass, I could probably go two weeks with having lots of energy. So I think that's the difference in terms of the treatment. So if you could do rectal or vaginal um, ozone and have energy for two or three days, you know, do that two or three times a week, now, now you're, it's full. You can conquer the world. So you can change the whole world just by doing that. Um, pro, pro drinking water. So I think, too, you guys could be freezing the water and giving people ice cubes to take home and suck on if they had surgeries or they had strep throat, things like that. I think that would really help. Prolozone is a treatment where you're injecting other substances like liquid substances into areas like joints that are hurting before you do the ozone gas. So in the mouth, when you inject ozone gas, it stings a little bit. And so sometimes uh, if I have to inject ozone gas straight, people will go, oh, oh my god, that's the worst pain I ever felt in the world. Like childbirth, or come on. You know, it's like, really? And um, so, if you inject, I inject homeopaths, and so liquid ones into that area first, and then I inject ozone. So it just sort of ameliorates that stinginess that goes away. Sorry, why do you inject first? Um, homeopathic remedies like anti inflammatories, and if your dentist wants to know, she can just call me and I can tell. I didn't realize that was used. 
Yeah, so there's a German company that makes homeopaths, and I do two anti-inflammatories, an antiviral, a lymph drainage, and then a couple vitamins. And so it's, it's all liquid, and I just put a couple drops in, and it sort of tends to, to kind of smooth that area out, and it's just not, not as sticky. Yeah. So it helps heal the area, too. So. Um, I think ear is great for, for you with your sinuses, too. I think it's not a one and done, but I think if you were to go to the office and then get a 15-minute ear treatment, you know, say every two weeks, I think eventually in, in a few months, you know, you start to be clear. Okay. I think that helps a lot. I mean, it's just examples that there's a TM joint injection. It's a little tiny diabetic needle, so it's not huge. I think as dentists, we're freaked out when we do outside injections. Like whenever I try to teach dentists something on the outside, they're like, oh, oh, oh. And same thing when I try to teach medical professionals, like, let's go in the mouth and do that. And they're like, uh, can't do that. And it's just so weird. So I call dentists for like, is it really, is the skin like really hard? Do I have to like press really hard? Who <laughs> knows, whatever. So, um, Marissa, my, my wife, um, she did her, she's a therapist and she did her internship at this like other side of the tracks um, hospital situation for kids. So they had a play table and she used to clean it up so she got Marissa around her midsection and she used ozonated oil to, to kind of calm it down so that helps. So this was just a research paper showing that ozone oil will And this, you know, like you have a 50-50 chance of going into the hospital and getting something really uh, dangerous like this, I think, you know, then you don't have to really worry that now you have ozone and you can cure it. So, and I age you. So those will take out wrinkles too. So you can put it in the face and you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, it's true. But I think looking at it from a blood standpoint, you're increasing the oxygenation of the blood. You know, as blood as blood gets older, as cells get older, you know, they have a lifespan, they're they're not as round as they were. And putting ozone into it, they show that the, the red blood cells get rounder. And so they're they're actually not necessarily getting younger, but they're looking younger for sure. Um, ozone generate. They say that there's a rainforest in Ecuador that produces 90% of the world's ozone in the ozone layer. You know, the one that Al Gore invented. Um, so it's just 24/7 um, uh, lightning storms. So I think that's really cool. And you got all been out in lightning storms to smell that that crisp that's ozone smell. So um, and this is what's happening. You know, you're just breaking the oxygen apart. You're adding it to that oxygen, so you're making no free. It's really simple. So I think if we could just take our ozone generators out and stick them in the air, then we would close up the hole. So. But, so you can, you know, it's coming out of the machine as a gas. You can take the gas, and you don't, you don't know that you can put it into the water, you can put it into the oil. Um, so I think the colder the water, this is really cool. So if you have a, like a pain in the butt patient, you can just make the water really cold. Like, we just need to get more ozone into the water. Um, but it, it I think the water's great. I mean, I think it's multi-purpose. I think you can use it. I think from a standpoint of hygiene, you're going in to get your teeth clean, so to speak. You can have that patient rinse with ozonated water, now you're taking so much of the bacteria load out of their mouth. And I think as dental professionals, what's dangerous to us is the plume that's coming off our patient's mouth while we're working in their mouth. All that bacteria is coming up and attacking us. And I think this, this helps reduce all that. So we can put ozonated water in ultrasonics and all the things in the where you know where you're spraying the water. Mr. Sorby sucks it out. So, um, so I think all of these and I think you know having patients. A lot of patients will come in with their water bottles. They can get some ozonated water. I think that's awesome. I think that they need to do that. You can even use it to wipe, uh, to put it in the laundry. So you just turn the hot water off. And you don't need soap because I I try to like I'm gonna put soap in here. You gotta have soap. And the soap just clots into a big clot, and it doesn't use the soap. And, but you're, they do. They come out way cleaner and way wider. It was, I was surprised. So this is what I have a company that makes those in oil, so this is my favorite part. But um, so you're basically taking this fatty acid chain of the oil. Like every oil has a fatty acid chain, so it's got a carbon-carbon double bond. The O3 is coming in and breaking that carbon-carbon double bond and forming a a, a five-member ring. That's called an ozonite. And so that's what, it's still acting like ozone, so it's still antimicrobial, it's still helping heal, but this is why it's stable. And this is why the oils are stable over 10 years. They'll, they'll last forever. Um, not forever, but for a long time. But if you give somebody a little vial, it's gonna be gone in three months anyway, so you don't care. 
But if you heat it up, then it's going to degrade faster. If you smell it and it's really bitter, that's, that's it's breaking down into the ketones and aldehydes. So just a little fact. But we created a chart to just show relative strengths. So hemp and flax are really high, so they're going to incorporate a lot of ozone, whereas olive and avocado are down below, and they're not going to incorporate as much. So on a raging infection, say you have a raging perineal infection, you're going to want to use something really strong. So if you had something that was a, a surgery or something, then we're going to use something strong, versus on the skin, which is really delicate, so you're going to want to use something that's more mild. And I think that's the difference in terms of how you use oils. I had a... Um, but you can use mine. I mean, we get people, like, I'm not a patient. I just got foot fungus. I'm a runner. I need the oil. So you can use it on anything. Um, I think in, in dentistry, you can use it on everything. I don't know if you guys use it much. Okay, cool. That's awesome. But I think it's a, I mean, I can dip my implants in the oil and then, and then place them because it, it integrates faster. I have a friend who's a dentist and a um, vet in Belgium, and I asked him what he uses it for for treatment of animals, and this is a list he came up with. But I also got a call from East Texas, um, and a, a veterinary clinic said that's the only thing that will cure like deep dog ear infections. They just dump the oil down the ear, and then it cure, and it helps with that. So that they didn't have any other treatment. So relative strengths, we talked about that, and I think you can use it in anything. I think. Um, What's really cool, I think, is the encapsulation. We figured out how to make them into soft gels. And so soft gels are exacting, they're easier to swallow, and there's a systemic effect. And there's not a lot of research on ingested oils, but they did two studies, and they did one on HIV in Africa, where they gave women the capsules one a day, and they got the titers to go down. And then they did Guardia in Cuba, and they got the kids to reduce their disease state, too. So I think for perio, Perfect. So this is all for you. Yeah. Um, I think the bad bugs are in the gums, or the space between the gums and the tooth, and I think that's where you get that's where you need to get the gas and oil to the tooth. Um, this is where get, they put gas on teeth, and so enamel is that outside covering of teeth, and then dents inside the tooth. It's like Swiss cheese, so it's got a lot of pores in it. So the bacteria can run wild in there, but they put ozone gas onto, it and they show. I mean, this electron microscope, but there's, I'm, I don't know what the difference is because I'm not an expert, but there's clearly a difference in terms of the surface texture. Um, they did a study and they showed that, you know, five, uh, 10 seconds of ozone gas will kill 99% of the bacteria on that tube. Can you, can you give a on So after, and so if you can see, if you're putting ozone gas onto a tooth, if you go to the dentist, you get a cavity done, and they put ozone gas on it, you'd be pretty assured that that tooth's not going to have bacteria in it later on and cause another cavity. So and this is talking about how we want the tissues to regrow, how we want the gums and the teeth to regrow. If we take away all of that bacterial load on it, we're going to remineralize it and we're going to regrow faster. So um, this was a tooth. A friend did this, and they, so that big black area, this area here, this is all a cavity. It's a huge cavity here. So what he did is he took out the cavity and he put a filling here, but he also ozonated it. He put ozone gas on it. And you can actually see where this part right here, this white part, is where the tooth actually regrew itself, which is pretty amazing that you can document it with an x-ray. So that's pretty cool. Um, and now crystals. Um, these are just tools. I have these in my office. This is like a mini sand blaster. You can add helium to this and you can use it like a dental drill. And it's not making any noise and it's not hurting. You don't need Novocaine with this because it doesn't, the teeth are not sensitive. So I think it's cool. Um, there's other ones. This is a laser cavity detector. So I think any dentist that's not using this, I think is below the standard of what they should be doing. Is that they, if they're just looking in there and saying, oh, I think it's okay. I, I, that would be uncomfortable. So. Um, this is another machine where it's actually a high intensity light and it's, it's lighting up the tube so you can actually see shadows and you can see cavities um, underneath fillings. And I think this is no radiation. So this is pretty cool. So if you go in the dental office and say, look, I want to reduce my radiation load. I don't want you to take as many x-rays as you normally do. 
this is a great tool to have. Um, this is a tool where it shows bacteria. So all of this stuff is bacteria here. And so you can actually prove that ozone works because you're just putting a little gas on a tooth. And so how do you know that it works? Um, but you can actually do a before and after with this camera. And you can actually prove that there's no bacteria left in that tooth with those. So I think that's really cool. Um, filling materials, like for the general public that's here, pretty much every material that we have in dentistry is toxic. So just get over it. <laughs> um, if we're going to do root canals, which I don't necessarily agree with, but you could use, this was taking the bacteria that they found in root canals and um, putting those on it and getting rid of it. So it's pretty much the only thing that we know that can get rid of any carcass of palace. So. And this, is, this was proving it. This was all the bacteria in the pores of the tube, and this was after ozone. Or, and so you're actually getting rid of the bacteria in the tubules. This was just research. This was exosomes in that, that study. This was the implants where they added oil to the implant and got better treatment. So if implants, if anybody had an implant, they can use ozone to heal it. Um, for dentures, hopefully nobody has dentures here, but you can put ozone oil into dentures and then help them not get candida or fungi around their dentures. Um, lichen plants, I don't know if you guys have ever seen lichen plants. Yeah. Um, it's, it's for what's, I'm not sure exactly what the organism is, but pretty much you can't open your mouth, chew, smile, and do anything because your gums hurt so much. And um, so ozone will reduce it and get rid of it. Um, you've all had colds, well, most people have had cold sores. You get rid of those in two or three days with those. Bless you. Um, orthodontics. The research showed that you can get rid of white spot lesions. And so if the mom doesn't want to pay for having their child come back multiple times, you can say, you can either get white spots or you can pay me to do both. So that's their, their options. Yeah, just a problem in there. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and whitening, I don't know if you do whitening in all this, but you put out some gas onto the, the whitening gel and make them whiter. Um, and this was, this was really freaky because this here was um, where they, this is decay in a tube, and then this is taking all the decay out, and this is putting a filling in it. Well, we, we gas it right here with ozone. So I had a mom one time, and she said, well, do we have to put a filling in here? Because she was pretty smart. She knew that most dental materials are toxic. So this is glass on and it's got fluoride in it, and it's got aluminum in it. So it's pretty toxic anyway. So I was like, my gentle mind was like, well, of course, we, there's a hole in your head. We have to fill it. And then I stopped. I didn't say anything, but I stopped and I was like, uh, no, we don't have to fill it. So we can actually leave a hole in their head like this with ozone and manage it. You know, we, if, as long as we're not getting food in there, you know, this is a seven year old and he's pretty capable of cleaning his own mouth. But if we make sure that there was no broccoli or scrambled eggs in there, you know, we, 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 we would be fine. And he could, and this is a, this is a primary tube, so he's going to lose this in a few years anyway. So why not, why not just keep it like that? So I think it's general kind of tube sensitivity. People who have, and, and I mean, you've all seen this, they come in for their teeth cleaning, like, my teeth are so sensitive, don't touch me. And um, you can go around with ozone and make sure that, you know, nothing's sensitive. And I think as a dentist, as a, if I'm working on a tooth extensive, I've done the tooth, and I've done everything that I possibly can, and the tooth is still sensitive, I could just hit it with ozone and make it and not, not be sensitive anymore, which I think is a really cool tool to have. So, and they could go out and eat ice cream. So, um, this is where I inject gas into people's mouths, and this was just the, the but the water lines, and I think if the public knew how much crap was in our water lines, they'd be grossed out. So there's, legally, we're allowed to have 500 CFU. So that's 500 million colony forming and 500 million bacteria we're allowed to legally have in our water lines as dead. So when you suck up Mr. Slurpee, you're getting everybody's spit coming back in your mouth. <laughs> so with ozone, you can get that down to between 0 and 20. So I think that's what that's what the the number one reason why I think everybody every dental office should be using ozone. And I think it's everywhere. I think safety wise, ozone 
they had this side effects was coughing. So if you put if you breathe if you take a big deep breath on ozone, you're going to cough for a while. That's the side effect. That's the worst thing that can happen with ozone. Absolute worst. So I think um, Lance Armstrong tried to say that he was just using ozone. It it and if you if you race camels, you can get you can get definite performance enhancement for that for sure. But these are all just uh, examples of where they used it for systemic diseases. This was pneumonia, where they did IV ozone and got ozone circulating in the blood. They treated hair loss. This is great for spouses who can't, who selectively hear what you say. <laughs> you can use ozone. Um, the osteonecrosis, I had an oral surgeon, yeah, this, I'm going to do this on my wife, so. Um, but um, I had this oral surgeon from Chicago, so like calls me up. He's like, oh, some of my general dentists have been telling me that it works on like osteonecrosis. So osteonecrosis is where part of the bone will die underneath the gums, and then it's just basically the only treatment that we know of is to just take that part of the of the jawbone out. And you can start to see if it starts to get pretty extensive. Now you're taking you know big parts of jawbones out, and um, and so ozone will stop that process. So sort of sort of calls me up. He says, "Well, also work on this stuff." I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Well, can you send me some studies?" I'm like, "Sure, dude. In my spare time, I'll just pull a bunch off yeah. and give it to you." That's I don't have anything else to do. But <laughs> anyway, I've never heard anything from him, so it's like, so, but I think in dental offices, what we usually use to wipe things down and to disinfect things between patients. So you know, it's like the next patient was there like five minutes ago, so we got to wipe the room down really quick. Well, we have these, these wipes that have really toxic chemicals in them. And it goes through, it actually will go through gloves. Even those big, like, really thick plastic gloves, it will go through that and it's liver and kidney toxic. So now you have your whole team members susceptible to getting diseases just because they're trying to clean rooms. So if you were, we're using ozonated water, it's 300 times as effective as those chemicals, and it's going to kill things, and it's going to be non-toxic. So I think that's huge. I think that just the general public wants to have something better, and this is, this is all these tools that can be better. So, and I live in San Francisco, so here's a little picture. <laughs> What's really cool on a foggy day is that you'll actually see like a layer of fog, and you actually drive into the fog. It's like somebody cut it with a knife. It's really cool. So, anyway, thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. How would you go about treating ALS? Ivy Ozone. Hi, Eric. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you?